And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Act three, buddy! Act three! Act three! The dread yes. act three! The most feared act three! Uh, 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 they sing songs. They sing songs of Act Three. Oh, that's a pretty tiara. Uh, hey, Bunny likes your tiara. Yeah. Um, I got it from the store. You got Mom it from a little tiara yeah. collection. Nice. Yes, Bunny, my friend. It is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film Podcast to boot scoot boogie our way into the third and final act of the show, and it is said third act wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our all-new extra strength and now available without a prescription, Movie of the Week! And this week, we continue our month-long deep dive into Westerns with the 1973 film Westworld! Yes. Da-da-da! First off, an explanation about Bunny's month. Uh, March is my birthday month, and when we get to the month of March, I try and just show movies that I like, movies that I dig. A lot of times we watch weird movies, bizarre movies, bad movies, and uh, when it's my birthday month, I try and just show movies that I dig, that I like, that I want to share with people. And when it's Bunny's month, he likes to teach us and take us places. And so all of so for a, a while now we've been watching westerns. And so we watched El Topo, which is Spanish for The Topo. It was directed by Clint Howard, I believe. Yes. Uh, and then My Name is Nobody, the touching story of a child lost at birth struggling to find his real mom and dad. So that was fun. Uh, that was the uh, Manic Pixie Dream Cowboy. And then this week, we are doing Westworld, the 1973 one, and not the Evan Rachel Wood one. Yes. But, Bunny, before we talk about this movie, I want to talk about the TV show. Last week, when you announced that we would be doing Westworld, I started cracking on the 2016 big-budget yeah. HBO series, Westworld. And I was like, oh, we're doing Westworld, the original, the 70s version, with bad special effects, and it's cheap, and it's dumb, and I love it. I love that stupid, dumb movie. And that's why I never watched that big budget HBO Westworld, because that was just, you know, hey, Game of Thrones is big. We need another Game of Thrones. So they did Westworld and they just they lost it up like they, you know, like the TV show Lost. And it's like, hey, here's this big, complicated backstory that we're making up off the seat of our pants. We promise that everything will have answers when we get to the end. And then they didn't yeah. give any answers. But like like they Game of Thrones did. They lost it. it and I, I never bothered to watch that Westworld TV show. Let me tell you, I like the original low-budget Westworld. It's the best. Say goodbye, HBO show. And then uh, the, the podcast ended, and I was like, yeah, never going to watch that HBO show. Not the thing for me. I like the original low-budget version. It's yeah. kind of like the first Star Wars movie and then freaking The Force Awakens. I'd rather take the original Star Wars. You know, uh, these new, this new Westworld isn't for me. I don't even think I'd like it. Maybe I can just download the pilot and watch it. I'll probably hate it. So anyway, I'm in the middle of season two. Okay. And this show is fucking amazing really holy fucking shit I, I, I binged the entire first season of Westworld in two and a half days wow I was fucking just roped in I absolutely loved it and then I got to season two and I've been taking it slower cause season one was great I'm not as excited about season two so far uh, but 
uh, yeah, it's 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 amazing how much money was blown on this fucking TV show. Uh, to compare, uh, the season one budget just for season one yeah. cost eighty eight million dollars to make. The 1973 film's budget was slightly over $1 million. Wow. So, yeah. Uh, HBO's Westworld, they dive so much deeper into who Delos is, what the company is, how the park is run, how the robots were created the other parks it's really intriguing okay. and it's what i want an explanation from especially from watching this movie is how does it work in medieval world and roman world where sensors on a sword really don't work yeah you uh know? yeah uh they explained it very well with the guns. You can't shoot another human. You can only shoot the robots. All of this, okay. So we understand about the guns. It's a fucking well, sword. Um, Roman world and medieval world are not present in the HBO series West World. But at the end of season one, you do get a glimpse of a, it's pretty much focused entirely in Westworld, but uh, near the end of season one, you do get a glimpse of their these uh, robots are trying to break free and they're going through the different areas of the Delos headquarters that run everything, and they get they go into a room filled with nothing but samurais. Yeah, and they're like, "What the fuck is this?" and and one of the Scientists is like it would take too long to explain to you. So you get a glimpse of another world near the end of season one, and then in season two, and then again in season three. Apparently, you get a look at the other worlds, and they are in no way Roman world or medieval world. But we'll get to that later because I have a list. Yeah, but uh, they do explain a lot, and it's a really good show. There's some twists. Ed Harris is in it, and he's fucking amazing. Uh, I was surprised to see... Yeah, I thought I saw his picture when I was scrolling through for artwork. I was surprised that a he's main the character... the Brenner role, role, Ed Harris? Kind of. The, it, it, he is a character known as the Man in Black, but it, the similarities begin and end with their all-black outfit. Yeah. So, uh... Oh my god, I just binged that entire first season and the second season I've been slowly watching and it, it, I was ashamed of how much I dug the new West. <laughs> I got Natasha to watch a bunch of it instead of packing for her trip. <laughs> yeah, really? It's like, I really need to pack. I really need to pack. I Oh, oh, did he find out yet about her and the... So, so yeah, it... it Unfortunately, the new West World is fucking great. But uh, okay, Did you also we're not talking. There was a series in the seventies. Yes. Okay. So there was the I movie West World. Yeah, there was the movie West World, and they made that movie, and it was a big hit. Michael Crichton wrote the wrote it as an original screenplay. A lot of people just assume that Michael Crichton like. Oh, this must be based on a book of his. This must be based on a short story, a fucking novella, something in a magazine. You know, it, people assume that Michael Crichton Stephen King did. Yeah. But he did not Stephen King it. If anything, he Stephen he maximum overdrived it. Okay. Because because this is a one hundred percent original story, a screenplay by Michael Crichton, and he made the movie and and. Uh, I was going to write this for the podcast, but I didn't. But apparently at the time that Michael Crichton was going to sign for Warner Brothers or, or uh, MGM to make this film, the MGM people were like, Michael, we're, we really want to be in business with you. And look, 
there are a lot of rumors out there. A lot of other directors have come forward and said that they were excited to work with MGM, but once they started filming, we started giving them a bunch of shit, giving unreasonable demands, it, it, demanding so many changes. And look, we know we've been we've been real pieces of shit in the past, but people can change. Yeah. People can change. MGM, we used to be a real piece of shit. Slick back hair, white bathing suit, sloppy steaks at Trapani's, big rock cut of meat with water <laughs> dripped all over it. And the waiters are all, hey, no sloppy steaks, guys. No sloppy steaks. But they can't stop you from ordering a steak and a cup of water. Next thing you know, we're <laughs> slathering that steak with water. Getting water all over the table makes the night so much more fun. Yes. So MG, <coughs> MGM is like, we've changed. We're no longer assholes. This is going to be a great time. And Michael Crichton said, great, we're in business. And immediately MGM said, great, we want you to completely redo the script. We're cutting your budget drastically, and we will not cast the two main leads until 48 hours before the start of filming. Good luck on your first film, fucker! Okay. So, so Michael Crichton was so burned out by making MG, by making Westworld, and MGM gave him so much shit that he was like, you know what? I am just fucking done with movies for a while. But MGM was like, but this is our biggest hit of the year. We need to do a sequel. And uh, uh, Michael Crichton was like, fuck this shit, I'm out. So they quickly just hired, like, I don't know, they just went on the street. Who are you? Uh, you're homeless. Great. You're now the fucking director of Westworld 2. Fucking get in here. We're making a fucking sequel. So they just got some random person, and so they made a sequel called Future World. It is in no way related to Michael Crichton. He disavowed the entire sequel, and he never saw it. And so they made the sequel, and the sequel was a hit, too. Vincent Canby said that the sequel was better than the original. Like, a lot of people hated Future World, but some people were like, hey... This is so much better. This is amazing. So then MGM said, shit, uh, let's do a TV show. So they did a TV show called Beyond Westworld. And I'm assuming it was on NBC only because it lasted like four or five episodes and then it was fucking canceled. And that's NBC's MO. Yeah. So they did a TV show. And I, I haven't seen it, but if I'm not mistaken... The TV show ignores the sequel and is a direct sequel to the first film. Okay. And it's like, there's <coughs> some bad guy and he has gotten a hold of a bunch of the robots from Westworld and he's going to use them to take over the world. So here are these two scientists who have to find the robots and stop them. And it's basically a robot of the week. That sounds ridiculous. You know? Yeah, it, I have to it remember was to look for it on YouTube, though. Yeah, it's, it, there's probably episodes there, but yeah. So they did make a TV show. It was not well remembered, but god damn that HBO show. Fuck! That is amazing. I fucking love it. Sandy Newton is fucking amazing. But anyway, Westworld! Woo! Westworld. So, what are your thoughts, Bunny? Why did you pick this? Uh, what are your thoughts about it? Just hit me. Just spank me with that <coughs> knowledge, bunny. It's a childhood favorite, basically. One of my early exposures to science fiction movies and what science fiction movies can be. And this was also a pretty big movie when it came out. You know, uh, not like... A lot of other movies I was watching, you know, Toho did not have big theatrical releases, Westworld did. Although, looking at it now, it looks really made for TV. Yeah. Doesn't it? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I didn't show my 10-year-old son Westworld, but I told him the concept of it. 
And he got real fucking excited. Yeah. At the idea of like, you mean to tell me that I can get on a horse and then rob a bank and then shoot and kill a bunch of people and it's okay because they're not real? Sign me the fuck up. Yeah. So Maxwell's all hyped for Westworld. Hooray. Nice. And it's and it's a movie that's just more fun than our other two, which had, you know, levels of work to them. Yeah. I thought last week's uh, was fun as hell. I love that goddamn yeah. movie. You have, to, you have to go watch the rest of his movies now. Yeah. He was just incredible in that, the star. Uh, what's his name? Treat Williams. Terrence Hill. Trent Reznor. Terrence Hill. I was close. <laughs> uh, I found my thrill. And it's just fun. Room. Again. Yeah. And the idea was fun. Uh, it's it a popcorn really movie. could use a remake. Yeah. It's a popcorn movie. Yeah. The highest, yeah. the highest grossing uh, movie for the studio in 1973. And man, so many big hits came out of 1973. We're talking about massive cultural touchstones like Godspell. Uh, the Baby, Lady Frankenstein, Jonathan Livingston Siegel, and of course the Oscar winner for Best Picture. All classic oh. films. All classic films. Dirk Man, every, star. everyone remembers where they were the first time they saw Godspell. Or is it Dirk Bogart? What's the I face man's remember. real name? <laughs> I don't fucking remember. So yeah, Westworld is set in the the distant future of 1983, and I fucking love that. This film was made in 73. You yeah. made it set in the future 10 years from now? Like, what the fuck? Robots, robots have always looked not too far off in the future. Okay. They still look that way. The thing, the thing that, the thing, the one thing that upset me about the HBO version of Westworld is that it, there are hints and small Easter eggs and tiny things that they drop in the HBO show Westworld, where if you want to think that this is not a reboot, but a sequel to the original 1973 Westworld, you could think that. Yeah. There are little things here and there that can lead some people to think that the 2016 HBO series Westworld is just the 1973 movie Westworld, but in the future where they got it all perfect. So one thing that pissed me off is that, damn it, they fixed the hands. Yeah. Now there is literally absolutely 100% no way to tell a human from a non-human. Like, there's a twist near the end of season one where it's like, damn, okay, you got me here. But, uh, but yeah, so, yeah. So, I, I love this movie. It's a popcorn movie. Yes, very much it's so. It's a popcorn movie, yeah. And so, when you're young, like Maxwell's age. That's probably the age I was when I first saw it. Maybe a little younger. Yeah. I dig this movie. It was, I it also, was cool. I also recently told Maxwell the plot of Tron. I think yeah. Maxwell would really dig Tron. Like, yeah. oh, this guy's been sucked into a video game. Like, Tron oh, that's a really one, good movie. Tron is one of my favorite yeah, that's, movies. That's 100% Maxwell's uh, modus operandi. And then they make Tron, right? And then like, oh, this, this is a uh, special effects milestone, really pushing the boundaries of special effects in films. I can't wait for the Oscar season. And then the Oscar season rolled around and Tron was nominated for nothing because the Oscar, uh, the, the Academy uh, people said, you made a movie with the help of computers? That's cheating. We're not nominating you for fucking shit. 
Wow. And it's like, God damn, dude. I, you can't find a movie now that isn't done with fucking computers. Tron got fucking screwed. Yeah. Piss me off. Yeah. So, okay. So, Westworld, it's the... the in, in the not-too-distant future... It's 1983, a vague company called Delos has created lifelike robots in a theme park where you can fuck or kill whoever you want for a thousand dollars a day. Yeah. Okay, uh, there are Disneyland hotels that cost more than an entire day at Westworld. Yeah. So, that's something I was thinking about. So, so there's medieval a, Yeah, and it's funny because at the time... It set it up that this was a very rich person place to go. Yeah. This wasn't Disneyland, not just anybody. Your, your upper middle class were not welcome. Yeah, so now you see 1973's Westworld and you go, oh, $1,000 a day. So cheaper than Disney World. Good to know. You know? Yeah. Like, like that says a lot. So there's different parks that Delos has to offer. There's Medieval World, Roman World, and West World. I mean, it's not a perfect movie. No. The special effects are laughable. I cannot... I, I, I can't not laugh in that first shot inside of the quote-unquote hovercraft which is obviously just like like a something being shook in front of a matte painting, you know? Yes. Like a like a they're projecting an image and and like it looks so cheap that like I can't help but laugh. So the special effects uh, are oftentimes the worst. You don't get a decent satisfying amount of backstory like hey, we're going to spend all of our time in Westworld and I'm like great. Show me who this fucking company is. Show me how it works. I want more behind the scenes. I want more of how this shit works. Show me more of the other parts. Show yeah. me more of, you know, and, and like there's not that. No. And then what pisses me off is that. It gives you a taste of all of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But not nearly enough. It's, it's a very, it's very glossed over. You know, yeah. you could see them in the control room getting ready to trigger the bar fight. And you could see them in the control room triggering other events in the other worlds. But we don't really get past that. We don't know who Delos yeah. is or anything like that. You know, is there a reason why they're suddenly breaking down? I saw a lot of people... I saw a lot of people online say that, oh, uh, fucking Michael Crichton predicted computer viruses. Because that's what happens. Oh, this, it, all of the machines are breaking down and it's spreading from robot to robot, almost like a virus. And it's like, okay, it's a fucking computer virus. Uh, Westworld broke down because uh, McAfee wasn't there to be a crazy ass son of a bitch. Yes. I can stop the viruses from happening. Also, I live in Cuba now, and I'm doing a ton of coke, and they're going to fucking kill me. So. Uh, <laughs> and then James Brolin is like, hey, I see what's going on here. You're new here. You're not used to things. Just stick with me. I've been here a bunch of times. A ton of times. I'm a regular. Yeah. Oh, no, a bad guy. Let me shoot him. Me, the regular, who's been here a bunch of times. He fucking shoots like a stormtrooper. I thought you said you've been here before. You yeah. can't shoot shit. Meanwhile, the guy with the fucking porn stash that looks like a 70s porn actor is shooting perfectly like an accomplished marksman. Yeah. And that pisses me off. Uh... And then Richard Benjamin, fucking, he looks so much. He, he looks, in my mind, I confuse him 
with that one 70s porn actor who also starred in Cannibal Holocaust. I don't remember his name, but the guy who got the one line at the end, the guy who was like, I'm not sure if we should run this footage. Like, he was an accomplished porn actor, and they hired him to be in Cannibal Holocaust so people can say, like, oh, there's a porn actor in this. Uh, maybe this is real, you know? Yeah. But... But I love this movie. I love this movie. I, I probably saw this when I was like 18 or 19. And it's like, this is dumb and I love it. Yeah. It's not the best movie. It doesn't have the best special effects. doesn't have a big budget. Uh, Michael Crichton wanted like a big no, budget. No, it was a good story. A good science fiction it story. It was. A good original limited story. limited special effects and limited yeah. budget. It was a good story, and they did the best with what they could. And I, I said this earlier, but I love the the practical effect that they did when uh, the porn actor throws the acid on Yul Brenner's face, and they they put a, they covered his face in oil based makeup and crumbled up Alka Seltzer on his face. So when uh, the porn actor threw uh, water on his face, it literally steamed up. That is fucking genius, that is genius. brilliant simplistic fucking special effects and I love it but yeah I love this stupid movie fun fact I was shocked to see this the brothel is run by fucking Gene Roddenberry's wife yes well that's another thing about the movie the movie's got a whole lot of faces from the time yeah, fucking well, just like, uh, Richard. Oh, it's that guy. Like, I swear, one of the technicians looked a lot like Peter Hoot. Yeah, fucking Richard. But I Richard, couldn't find him uh, on IMDb at all. Because yeah, I fucking Richard, looked. Richard Benjamin, uh, uh, James Brolin, Dick Van Patten, Yul Brenner, fucking M Major, whatever her name is. Yeah. I keep forgetting her name because I'm not that big of a Trekkie. Uh, fucking Dick Van Patten. Yeah, this this was a fun ass. And what about movie. the guy? What about the guy near the end? The guy who was he was a Delos employee and he was trapped outside and he was trying to fix his yeah. cart when Richard Benjamin comes riding up. Yeah. You know, he looked like somebody. Fucking, he was a huge face at the time. Yeah. He was the one, well, well, you could try throwing acid at it for its eyes and, you know, noise for hearing, stupid shit like this. And then Yul Brynner rode up and shot him. And, and, then, and then the guy's like, there's numerous ways that you could defeat him. You could use fire. You could use acid on his face. You can use sound. Sound would, would uh, a loud sound would uh, make him so that he couldn't hear, so he couldn't be able to get you. And then Richard Benjamin goes, acid, gotcha. Yeah. And never uses the sound. And it's yeah. like, oh, okay, well, I thought you were going to do a Venom thing and start making loud noises and the symbiote would freak out. And I but this always, movie... In, in any acid-throwing scene, I really always have a logistic problem of how do you not get that shit on your hand? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Anyone who throws acid needs a pair of fucking gloves. Yeah. But movies so it don't gets show more that. complicated than it sounds. <laughs> Maybe this movie... if you throw the whole jar. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. And then you get uh and then the and then the glass cuts your face and then the acid goes into the cuts. And then your face explodes. Like <laughs> like like Riccio. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's talking about Squid Game on Netflix. Yeah. The Korean show Squid Game. Uh, Mal binge watched it, got really into it, and everybody's talking about it. But I haven't bothered to watch it because I read the original novel Battle Royale and watched Battle Royale and watched Battle Royale 2. So I don't think I need to watch Squid Game. Yeah. I'm a Battle Royale fan. 
It's kind of so getting I, to be... How long has it been since Battle Royale? It's starting to seem a generational thing. Yeah, I'm starting to think that Squid Game is just... is just a, a less fucked up Battle Royale. Like, to every battle- generation, you have to have this story. So, for us, it was kind of Battle Royale. For people a bit younger than us, it was Hunger Games. And now we're yeah. coming into a new generation, and it's Squid Game. And it's the same story, but, like, each generation has to retell this story. Yeah. I like still each like... each generation has to retell Frankenstein. Each generation has to retell Dracula. Yeah, yeah. I still like my idea for a Battle Royale spinoff of an island which is filled with every famous dog. Yeah. Rin Tin Tin, Snoopy, Scooby Doo, fucking. Benji, who has really become Benji. forgotten in his time. Yeah. Clifford, the big red dog. Uh, the fucking three headed dog, Fluffy, from Harry Potter. Every famous dog is there. And they all have to kill each other until one dog is left standing. I think it would be Snoopy. A lot of people would say Clifford because he's got the height advantage. But the way that I see it, all the other dogs would gang up on Clifford just like every time Andre the Giant was in a battle royale. Yeah. Was in a royal rumble. It's like, shit, let's, we all hate each other. We got to team up on Andre the Giant first, right? Okay, let's throw that motherfucker out. Then we can continue with the match. And Snoopy so I, is fucking crafty as hell. Yeah. Look. Yeah, he is. Snoopy took down the Red Baron. Dino Mutt. He's got all the fucking gadgets, too. That's another, like, dark horse yeah. that could take this whole thing. Yeah. But, okay, so this movie, Westworld, it seems rushed as hell, and I did some looking into it. Yul Brenner did this for just $75,000. $75,000? You know what? That's kind of what I was thinking. That's kind of what I was thinking in my brain. Like, you said it was made for just over a million, right? I could... If you wanted Tommy Wiseau to be in your film for 30 seconds, it would cost more than to have Yul Brenner star in fucking Westworld. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? And then they didn't cast the two human leads. They weren't cast until 48 hours before filming. It was filmed in a tight 30-day schedule, and then it was rushed into theaters just five months after they finished filming. So this whole movie seems like it was rushed the fuck into theaters. Yeah. Uh... And am I correct in thinking Which is that like, why? 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 I, I mean, I, I can see. I can rushed, see. But it definitely feels rushing Armageddon out into the theaters because you have Deep yeah. Impact, a, hot, a very similar movie, coming out right on its heels. I can see rushing out Tombstone and Wyatt Earp as quick as you can. Why the fuck are you rushing out Westworld? I do not fucking know. I do not fucking know. But they definitely rushed the shit out of this. I did. I did some investigating. This film was fucking rushed as hell. Am I correct in thinking that Westworld is just for the people who want to be violent and Roman world is for the people who just want to fuck? Mm, Basically, that's what it seems like. I mean, I imagine that Roman world is just fucking drinking wine and occasionally stabbing some senator in the back, yeah. right? Like, what else is there to do? I understand, like, medieval world, okay, there's damsels, there's knights, there's jousting, there's sword fights, there's probably a fucking wizard, you go, yeah. and there's probably evil people in a fucking cave somewhere, uh, fucking, I get that. West world, okay, uh, you could be a white hat or a black hat. That's an important decision in the HBO West world. Is yeah. that before you get into West world, the last thing you do is pick your color of hat. Okay. And it says a lot about what you are going to do in West world. But like, what is fucking Roman world? Just fucking people? 
fucking girls and guys and then going to a vomitorium? Is that like all there is? I don't get Roman world. Yeah. Go watch Gladiators. But watching 1973's Westworld helped me because the people sitting behind the two leads are like a couple and the the intro is talking about medieval world with knights and damsels and the husband's like ha, 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 yes honey this is going to be great can't wait to go to medieval world and also there is decadent roman world and then it's a close-up of the husband going shit i wish i could be there instead <laughs> So I'm assuming that it's like, okay, honey, bye. I'm going to go to Westworld. You know how much I love being cowboy and yeah. fighting bandits. And uh, okay, bye. One for Roman world, please. I want to do a lot of fucking anal. <laughs> I want to get drunk off my ass and have crazy fucking sex. So, so I'm assuming that's what Roman world is. Yeah. Okay, so I've got a list. Okay. Um, in, in the 1973 universe, there are three parks. There are Westworld, Medieval World, and Roman World. Then in the 1976 sequel, Future World, there is the same three parks, Westworld, Medieval World, and Roman World, but they've added another one, Future World. Oh, everything's chrome. We're in fucking space, fucking Moonraker. See, I, I would have fun there. Yeah, that makes sense. I imagine it's like, like it's like Logan's Run meets the Black Hole, you know. So but I don't, uh, I, I don't think world. that they are being creative enough in that they can drop you into a whole narrative. So they can drop you into the Marvel universe. They could drop okay. you into Stephen King's world. You know, they're not being imaginative enough, okay. just taking a time and a place. You are really skipping ahead in my list. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. So let me continue. So we've got four worlds already on this list. West world, medieval world, Roman world, and future world. Then in the 2016 HBO series West world, there are other lands, including... It, the, they get rid of rat, West uh, Roman world and, and uh, medieval world and future world. What they have is, are some oddly specific ones. There's one world called the Raj, which is India colonized by the British. So, uh, so that's one world. I guess if you want to ride uh, elephants and shoot at tigers with a shotgun, you go to yeah. the Raj. Uh, then there's Shogun World with samurais and shit. Okay, that might be fun. I would, I would like to go to Samurai World only if Tom Cruise is there and I get to cut him mm -hmm. with a knife because he was the last samurai. He was the yes. last samurai. Or 57, <coughs> 57 samurai? I don't know. And then the last one is called War World. This is shown in season three, apparently. And I haven't gotten to it yet. It is Italy under Nazi occupation. Okay. And I am frightened to think of how goddamn popular fucking Nazi World would be. Yeah. Like, at first, I'm like, oh, my God. So War World is just Nazi-occupied Italy? Who would want to be in Nazi World? Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people yeah. would want to go to Nazi World. It would be very popular with cops. Yeah. And fucking PE teachers. PE teachers. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, fuck it. It's 2021. We're making some new parks. I asked my kids for help, and of course, the, the first thing out of Maxwell's mouth, you already called it funny, fucking, oh, Westworld, uh, 1920s gangster world, yeah. uh, 
50s world. Everyone has slick back hair and everyone's snapping. Fuck it. Marvel world. Yeah. It's just a recreation of New York City while you're walking down the street and, oh, my God, here comes fucking Galactus. You now have powers. You've got to team up with these superheroes. If you don't want to stay in New York, just go uh, past that. Oh, look, now you're in Queens. There's fucking Spider-Man. He needs your help. There's uh, the fucking Brooklyn Bridge. Go past that through the, the, the water, through the ocean. Oh, now you've gotten to an island. What is that? It's fucking Latveria. Doctor Doom is there. He's trying to kill you. The Fantastic Four show up. It's an entire world of just Marvel. If, if Westworld... If they had that technology, they wouldn't be creating these new storylines and shit. Fucking, oh, there'd be Avatar World. There'd be fucking Star Wars World. All of that shit. Yeah. But I would dig Marvel World. Yeah. Uh, here's, here's, a, here's another one that Maxwell came up with, which I don't hate. Mario World. Mario World? That, that would be kind of fun. Getting a getting a oh i'm gonna hit this block there's a leaf in it now i can fly i'm gonna go fight this dragon bowser monster and i'm gonna save a princess who's gonna kiss me and then oh look now i'm in the water like that would be really fun riding yoshi yeah. and like you could take and like there would be like things you could get and you could like bring powerful. Yeah, you could shoot fire and like that would be a lot of fun. I mean, maybe oh, not, maybe really. not Mario World for the main theme park, and maybe not Mario World for a whole weekend, you know. But maybe over on one of their their uh, franchises, you know, they or maybe have, like a Mario Day or something like that. Or maybe I just came up with this. Uh, Westworld, Delos is now for kids. You can come and enjoy uh, Westworld and Roman World, and you can bring your children. They'll have fun in Mario World, which in my mind is Fruity Land from Rick and Morty. And like you can fall from a great height, and you're just gonna bounce. Oh, yeah. I can't be hurt. I can't. Oh, I just hit you with a fireball. That does nothing because this is a kid friendly version of a Westworld. Well, what about Kingdom Like a video Hearts? game world. Like Doesn't Kingdom Hearts yeah. have a whole lot of really weird yeah. types of characters? Yeah, like a Disney Kingdom world. Yeah, like Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts. Hearts. So Eleanor came up with two uh, parts, what? like five year old. Eleanor came up with two parks, my five-year-old. One of them was a great idea that I helped her with. Uh, first off, Unicorn Land. There's unicorns. You can ride them. Everything is sparkly. There's a lot of glitter. Eleanor was really excited about Unicorn Land. But then she came up with an idea for, like, Scary Land, and it, where everything's scary. And Bendy is there from the video game, Bendy and the Ink Machine. And so I took that idea and I reworked it. Horror Land. Yeah. And it's a small town in small town America. And you live on Main Street. And it's <coughs> Halloween night. And whatever monster you can think of is there. Yeah. And, and like, it, in my mind, it's like a live-action Fortnite, except you're trying to be killed by, like, oh, my God, here comes Mike Myers. I better run. Oh, shit, there's Jason. I better run. Oh, shit, there's Slenderman and fucking whatever. That would be fun yeah. to try and, like, try your hand at escaping Predator and the Killer Tomatoes. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit, it's Jason. And who's that with him? Oh, no, it's killer clowns from outer space. Fucking okay. I'd be fine with that. Eleanor, you're covering up my list. So here are some ones that I came up with. Uh, Shrek World. Okay. It's a big swamp. It's a big swamp. You can hang out with a donkey. You can eat bugs. I am I think that would actually be very popular. This one is my favorite, 80s porn world. <coughs> Yeah. A lot of plumbers and pizza delivery guys. Yes. Uh, Garfield World. This would be a good one if you want to go on a vacation, but you're also really lazy and enjoy lasagna. Yeah. 
Because now you could just lie down, take a nap, and when you wake up, you can eat a shit ton of pizza and push a dog off a table. Who hasn't wanted that? Yes. And, uh, and yeah, so those are the new parks that me and my children came up with. Some of them are pretty good ideas. Yeah, I like uh, it. Yeah. So, and also, uh, I mentioned this earlier in the podcast, I really miss end credits that are just two minutes long. So I, I, I always pay attention to movie credits, and I want to give just a small tribute to the action scene coordinator, a man named Dick Zicker. Okay. Dick Zicker, yes. Z-I-C-K-E-R. If you think you had a rough childhood, yes. just yes. imagine growing up with the name Dick Zicker. Yeah. I imagine kids were not, kids are cruel. Yes. Especially to someone with the name Dick Zicker. But apparently... I was like, that's a funny name. I'm going to look him up. Holy shit. He is a body double and a stunt man and an action a fight coordinator who has worked on such films as The Blues Brothers, Die Hard, and he choreographed the wrestling scenes in Man on the Moon. Really? Yeah, fucking Dick Zicker is still alive and still kicking. He was a body double in Godzilla 2, The Dark World. The, the, the Godzilla film with King Ghidra in it. He was yeah. a body double in that. Dick Zicker is still around. So I just want to nice. say, you know, kudos to Dick Zicker. Yes. You know, he did Westworld. He still kept going. So anyway, they made a sequel to Westworld, which is fucking ridiculous, because, hey, if you have a park with robots and robots killed, like, 500 people, I don't think they'd fucking reopen. Okay, see, now, the next one I saw in the theaters. Yeah. I was very young, but I was, I was old enough to be able to handle this kind of movie, Future World, and I was really fucking excited. And then I was pretty much bored. Yeah. I'm surprised you know, at how this many This was going to be a big special effects thing, you know, showing <laughs> you the future, and yeah. it wasn't. Hell, fucking Westworld wasn't a big uh, special effects thing. But... This is the first movie to ever show the POV of a robot. This is the first movie that was ever created to show the grainy POV from a robot's point of view. This was the first. And they got the footage and they ran it through some very primitive 1970s computers. Technically, this is the first film with CGI. Really? Yeah. But I find that yeah, fascinating. You Nowadays, ran it into a computer and ran it back out those days. Yeah. Nowadays, you have a movie with a robot in it. You're gonna get one of those shots from the robot's point of view and all the fucking data on the side and fucking yeah. it's all grainy and fucking yeah, yeah. This is the first film to ever do that, and I find that to be absolutely fascinating. Also, Yul Brenner in this walks very specifically, very confidently, like he has a stick up his ass. Slow and methodical and to the point. And so it was so iconic the way that he walked to uh, try and catch Richard Benjamin that when they made the movie Halloween, the guy who played Mike Myers based uh, Mike Myers's, Michael Myers's walk on... Yul Brenner's walk in Westworld, and then when Arnold but wasn't Schwarzenegger... He, but wasn't his character from Westworld basically his character from Magnificent Seven? Yes, it is a specific parody. Yeah. Because Yul Brenner's character does 
do actions and mannerisms in the exact way that his character in The Magnificent Seven does. So I imagine if you were like 22 and you go and see Westworld in a theater the day it came out, you go, ah, I see what you're doing. Yeah. This is funny. Yeah. So, yeah. It's like if you go to Medieval World and one of the characters is fucking, I don't know, one of the guys from Game of Thrones, I imagine, yeah. is what that would be. So then when uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger did... What? Sure, sure. So then when Arnold Schwarzenegger did the Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger based his Terminator's walk on Michael Myers's walk, which means indirectly the Terminator is Yul Brenner. Yeah. Vicariously, Arnold Schwarzenegger is Yul Brenner. They both have the exact same way of talking, ironically. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger's been in this country for freaking 50 years and he still sounds like he just came off of the boat. And that yeah. really confuses me. Arnold Schwarzenegger was, I, I believe, going to do a reboot of Westworld, but he had to drop out because of uh, a little something called becoming fucking governor. Yeah, there was a lot of talk leading up to the HBO show for, yeah. for quite a while. And for a while, just kicking around casting, when I just thought that they were going to redo the movie, I thought Josh Brolin for The Gunslinger would have been fucking awesome. Oh, that would have been great. On so many different levels. Yeah. He would make a kick-ass Gunslinger, just, yeah. by, just by the way. And yeah. he would be a departure from the Yul Brynner look. Yeah. And it would also be a really subtle nod to the previous movie. Yeah, that would have been fucking amazing. But yeah, that's all I've got for Westworld. I love this movie. It's fucking awesome. And I love it. I'm worried if the way that you are uh, uh, doing all of this is that, hey, the first week we're doing the best Western movie that we would like. The week after that, here's the second best Western that I think that you'll really dig. And now we're here. No, with that's Westworld. not how we're, that's not our trajectory. Uh, okay. This is this next one is not necessarily my favorite, or okay. I'm saying it's the best. But we're going from more serious to more lighthearted. Okay. So you okay. start off with El Topo, and that's about as serious as a movie as you're gonna get. Yeah. My Name is Nobody is not without its seriousness, but it's more lighthearted than El Topo. Yeah. This is more lighthearted and fun than either one. So um, we're going out on a laugh. Okay. Is one last fact. Through. One last fact about Westworld that I forgot to say. Yes. Uh, the Western set looks really fucking cheap. Yes. Because they literally... It, they reused costumes, they reused special effects, so when it came time to filming the Westworld stuff, they literally just went to the back lot of MGM Studios and said, oh, you have a Western set. Fucking fine. This is Westworld. And, yeah. and, and they did it on purpose because, like, okay, if this was a theme park, it wouldn't look 100% accurate, it would look kind of cheesy, and we already have this cheesy set from, like, the 50s, so fuck it. This is Westworld. And it's so cheesy that Westworld is the same set from fucking Blazing Saddles. Oh, yeah? Exact same town, exact same setup, yeah. So the town from Westworld is the same town from fucking Blazing Saddles, and I just had to say that. Westworld so, okay. takes place in Rock Ridge? Yeah, yeah. 100%. Oh, that's 100. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So what movie are we doing next week? I'm worried and nervous and excited. Uh, probably what is going to be the closest to a traditional Western. This is mid-60s, starring Henry Fonda and Joanne Woodward. Big hands for the little lady. 
I have no idea what the fuck that is. <laughs> I okay. think you may enjoy it. Big hand for the little lady? And it is already up on the cough cough. Okay. No idea what the fuck that is, so that's exciting. I feel like uh, this is payback for, for, for this week. Because you were like, okay, the next episode we're going to be doing is Westworld. I'm like, fuck, yes! Westworld, <laughs> I love that movie! And then it's like, okay, our next film is Big Hand for the Little Lady. Okay. You're going to like it. You're going to like right. it. There's nothing not to like here. Okay. okay. <laughs> Big fan of Joanne Woodward. So already, right there. One check. All right, so that's next week. Next that week. is next week. Next week, we're doing Big Hand for the Little Lady, uh, for the Little Lady. <laughs> uh, I'm also going to have the kids write the opening again next week, which I think is going to be a lot of fun. And uh, another shab. Okay. Uh, this time about the family. I'm not going to make it to the ending. Thing. Keep talking for a little while. Pat okay. it. <laughs> uh, so next week, it's going to be a good episode. Uh, there's going to be a lot. We're going to be talking about... Crimea uh, and its its sister openly weep Mia because it's not just cry Mia it's also sneeze Mia uh, Mia uh, Mia make a pizza pie I'm just talking at this point uh, I would now like to do an impression for you this is an impression of Jigsaw if he was an eight-year-old. <clears throat> Hello, Mom and Dad. I'd like to play a game. Do, do, do you have any games on your phone that I could play? Please? Okay, can I go play outside on the street? I promise that we'll get hurt. Thank you, and scene. So next week on the podcast, we're going to be uh, doing another Western, which I'm super excited about. Westerns are the best. I love Westerns because they tell me about my past. Me a white man. Uh, big hand for the little lady next week. Not sure what that is. I'm assuming it's about someone with just a big ass hand and he just slaps women around. I don't know. So then, uh, so that's going to be exciting next week. But now that I'm looking back at this week, wow, we had so much fun, didn't we? <sighs> Man, is, we had so uh, much fun. Uh, there is an actual person in your life that actually has huge hands. Good to know. Good to know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, now that I'm looking back, you know the ups, the downs, the highs and the lows, the Rocky Horror Picture Show... Uh, the Nazis had propaganda. Yeah. The Spider Woman. I gotta say, I think this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast. Yeah. This has yeah. been a damn good episode. Okay, good. I, fe I, I, I feel the same way, but I didn't want to step on your toes because I feel like you're the person who makes that distinction and not me. But yes, I concur with your assessment, good sir. <sighs> So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steven on behalf of Eleanor and Maxwell and Mal and everybody else. I just want to say thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you do stuff with them. <laughs> and you. And you robots. Nice. Stop it. And your daddies. <laughs> Do 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 do